Throughout the years, there have been a multitude of unanswered questions, unsolved mysteries like, are atomic bombs dangerous? What shape is the Earth? And what kind of cheese is the moon made out of? Even within the gaming world, there have been a number of important questions such as, when will the PlayStation 6 come out? Will Microsoft ever learn how to count? Is Nintendo physically capable of not milking their old games dry? And can you beat Astro's Playroom without jumping? Well, out of all of those, there's only one I can actually answer. The moon is made out of Swiss cheese, although some people think it's green cheese? Have you ever actually seen the moon? It's not green. Stupid idiots, it's Swiss. It's definitely Swiss. Since we don't know when the PlayStation 6 will come out, I guess I'll have to tide myself over with the PlayStation 5. Maybe I should try to answer another question too, to make up for my lack of knowledge on that front. I mean, if I'm using my PS5, I may as well play some Astro's Playroom. Maybe I can beat it without jumping. Before I tell you about my quest to determine if this was feasible, we have to clarify the rules. What exactly counts as a jump? By my definition for this run, a jump is pressing the X button or cross button, if you're a psychopath, while Astrobot is standing on the ground. Normally, if we do, Astro will leap into the air. Not allowed. But this is a 3D platformer. How on earth are we supposed to beat a 3D platformer without jumping? Well, aside from jumping, we have two primary tools at our disposal, the midair spin and the hover. The spin allows us to air stall, slightly extending our aerial movement. During the hover, Astro shoots lasers from his feet, temporarily gaining some height and drastically increasing the amount of time he can stay in the air. This will be our primary method of gaining height throughout the run, but we have to be off the ground before we can activate it. Absolutely any technique or glitch is fair game, provided we don't perform the action of jumping. So, those are the rules, but what's the end goal? We need to beat the 8 Astro levels and the final boss in order to finish. I'll be leaving out the vehicle portions in this video because they can't jump anyway. It's arguable for the frog suit, but if we count the spring as jumping, then this run is a failure right off the bat, so we'll be ignoring that. And while there are short Astro segments in the otherwise vehicular levels, they're pretty simple to get through and I'll be leaving those out in favor of concentrating on the much trickier purely Astro levels. Alright, with all that out of the way, let's jump right in with the first level I tackled in my original playthrough, SSD Speedway. May our load times be fast and our jumps unnecessary. The first part of this level isn't too hard. We can walk up this slanted rail, walk off, and hover to this platform. We can then just walk off the stair and laser up to the next one. We then enter the first of three hang glider sections. Don't worry, this isn't a jump. It's automatic and does not require a press of the X button, so it doesn't break our rules. Ah, here's our first checkpoint. Progress is being made, so let's just hop on this button and fly onto those floating platforms. Wait, why can't I walk up the edge? No, 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 this is the worst news! So, we've run into a problem. Apparently, in order to help those less skilled gamers, not me, by the way, they've made it so you can't just walk off edges into the void. I'm sure that helped some four-year-old somewhere enjoy the game better, but it absolutely destroys the possibility of this run. If I can't walk off edges, then I can't engage my hover ability and get anywhere. But you're not stupid. I hope. You know that well over half the video is left and that I wouldn't have even bothered making it if this was a complete run ender. So here is where I'll introduce my secret weapon, the double hover. If you attack while falling off a ledge and immediately hover, you'll be able to hover twice, granting a total height change nearly equivalent to a normal jump. But Danny, I hear you say, how does it help us here? We need to be able to walk off a ledge to do this trick, and as we already established, that's impossible here. Well, good thing for us, the invisible walls that prevent us from falling into the void are extremely glitchy, and often there are ways to push through them or ignore them altogether. Here, if we run off right after pressing the button, we can sometimes fall off the edge and double hover to the other side. The next part is tricky. We can fall off the edge because the decorations count as ground, but the next platform is too far to reach. The invisible wall on the moving around platform here is unstable, however, so we can sometimes fall off and hover to the next part. 
With the hang glider, we need to aim high and far, skipping part of the course. If done correctly, we can travel directly to the next glider portion, and from there to the scaffolding surrounding the rocket. For the most part, this is easy. We can make use of hovers and double hovers by falling off platforms in the right places. The last difficult part is the very end, where we must get on top of the rocket. By walking around the edge, then quickly walking and spinning backward, we become airborne and able to fly to the top. There we go! One of eight levels down! This is going great! How hard could the rest of it be? Alright, let's continue with SSD Speedway. To deep data space we go. The first part is easy, allowing us to fall and hover our way up. The bounce pads are also great, putting us in the air for absolutely free. Needless to say, the first half of this level is not very hard. The second checkpoint is where it gets interesting. This little rock bump allows us to double hover to the next platform, skipping the floating platform, but now we have an enemy to contend with. If it hits us, we'll be knocked down and it'll explode, dooming us to ash. It took me a while, but I figured out that if you get up on these rocks, then spin and hold backward to fall off, you can light the fuse with your hover lasers and run away, then use the hole blown in the ground to climb up to the next checkpoint. Then we can grab the gun, get through the swarm of enemies, and... Ugh. Stairs, and nothing to fall off of so we can hover onto them. The dream is dead. Honestly, it's frustrating to fail so soon, but there's really nothing that can be done here. Well, you know what that means. Time to move those goalposts. All right, I guess instead of trying to beat the game with no jumps, we'll try to beat it with as few jumps as possible. I'm sorry I have to do this, but you gotta admit, my other title made much better clickbait. So, how many jumps does it take to get up these stairs? Well, just one if we hover afterward, but now we're faced with another problem. These floating rock platforms won't let us walk off the edge and hover to the next, so if we get on, we're basically trapped. We can use the double hover to get onto them, but we can't go anywhere from there. Believe me, I tried clipping off the edge, but I couldn't find anything. So that's one more jump to add to our total. If we make it to the second one with the double hover, we only need one jump to reach the next platform. We'll then pull out this wire and slide to the final section. Compared to the rest of the level, this is actually pretty easy. With some well-timed double hovers and exploits of the terrain, we can make it to the end and complete our first world with only two jumps. I wish we were still on track for our original challenge, but you know what? This isn't bad so far. Well, I guess it's now on to Cooling Springs and Bot Beach, where we get a refreshingly easy level- Oh, come on! Was this ledge really necessary? I tried getting enemies to follow me there so they could bump me up, but they weren't coded to go that far. And while there are interactable physics objects like seashells, we can't bring them and get up with them because the wind will blow them back. Unfortunately, it looks like we'll have to swallow our pride and make another jump. The good news is that Frigid Flows, the next level we'll have to tackle, is not only possible without making any jumps, but the most fun and interesting to figure out. Let's go through it. If you start the level by teleporting to it, you'll end up in this room with stairs, and there's no way for us to start our hover. I tried knocking these cones around to get up to the next stair, but they disappear too fast to use. All seemed lost. But then I remembered how we enter the level from the previous one. We go down a slide into this room and are temporarily airborne. So I replayed the level and while the timing is difficult, you can hover as you exit the slide. Allowing us to get on top of the stairs without requiring a jump and enter the level proper. One great thing about the ice found in this level is that we can fall right off it without it trying to stop us. So we can easily make our way over the first few barriers and to the first checkpoint. This is where it gets hard. If we find ourselves standing on these snowy platforms at all, we're toast, because we can't fall off. What's required is multiple double hovers in quick succession, which are already pretty tricky by the way. We can do it from the edge of the ice slide, to the falling platforms, to these other falling platforms, and then thankfully, to the checkpoint. It's quite difficult, but very possible. From this checkpoint, we can slide down and double hover onto the raised platforms to get over the lip. This is the bit that threw me for a loop. After defeating this enemy, there was seemingly no way to get onto the next raise. It was too far to double hover from the other side. It took a lot of investigation, but this little piece of snow is our saving grace. It can help us clip through the invisible wall that prevents us from falling off, and then we can fly up to the next checkpoint. From here, all that remains is a couple rides on shrinking ice blocks. When they fall over the dip, it allows us to walk off, so overall, not too bad. 
definitely the most fun level in the game for this challenge. I mean, all we have left is Memory Meadow, GPU Jungle, and the final boss. We're nearly halfway through with only three jumps. Nice! Let's tackle GPU Jungle next, specifically Render Forest. It doesn't start well. There's a large jump we have to make and nowhere to double hover from to get on this step. Add one to the count. Once we get up, there's another jump we have to make almost immediately to start climbing the staircase of triggers. I tried going into the lofts and jumping from there, but even though I can get up, it won't let us fall from the platforms up there, so that won't work. Once we get to the top of the trigger stairs, we're faced with a bottomless gap between us and the next platform. Using a tight double hover by falling back onto a trigger, we can reach the platform, then use these rocks to climb up this ledge and hover over to the wire. Unfortunately, there's no way to actually get off this wire without jumping. This is perhaps the most frustrating required jump in the game. It feels so useless. We're just trapped on the wire otherwise. Originally, I thought we needed to jump to get off this tilting plane, but thankfully, that's not necessary. We can run off the curved edge next to the wall and double hover to the next portion. I also thought we were trapped here at first, I mean, we can't walk off the edge, but the enemy will kindly push us through the barrier and let us hover to the final checkpoint. The rest of Render Forest is smooth sailing. Trampolines make it far easier than it has any right to be. Ray Trace Ruins is up next. The first part is pretty easy. We can clip off the edge in this corner and walk off the side of this rotating platform to fly over the ledge. The next part is kind of tricky. You have to land on the enemy and have them carry you around so you can get off at the next checkpoint. Difficult, but possible with a few tries. Climbing up the next part is pretty easy with some well-timed double hovers. We can go around this edge to get to the next checkpoint. The hard part is these breakable platforms that pop up. Unfortunately, we can't skip the section with a good hover, and we have to take two jumps. One to reach the middle platform, and another to reach the next one. We'll then cross this wire and grab the bow and arrow. With some tricky flying, we can land on these barriers to cross the bridge, but unfortunately we need to jump at least once climbing up to the final checkpoint. Here. There's nowhere to fall off and activate our hover. Alright, so we reached the boss, and I think it's time for me to come clean. So far, I haven't beaten every single level in a single jumpless run, but I have beaten every part to confirm it's possible. That's not the case for this dragon boss fight. It's 100% possible to do without jumping, it's just not something I have the skills to do. So here's how we managed to do it in theory. We can use this corner right here to semi-consistently fall off, and then if we double hover to the right place, we can get over a layer of projectiles. The reason it's so hard is because each of these actions individually is difficult. We don't always fall off the corner, we can't always get the double hover, and we can't always get to the right place and we have to do it with no mistakes five or six times in a row. It's infeasible for an unskilled moron such as I. The odds for me are approximately 3.81 in a million. That's about the odds of getting struck by lightning. If anyone can do this consistently, let me know. So that's GPU Jungle completed with just six jumps. At this point, some sharp-eyed viewers may have noticed that I haven't mentioned a particular part of the game, the opening sequence. I've determined that one jump is required here to get up onto the stairs, but the rest isn't an issue. Unfortunately, that's another added to our total. Now all we've got left is Memory Meadow and the final boss, but oh boy, are we just getting started. No, we're not actually, we're over halfway through the video. I don't know why that's an expression, actually, it's dumb. Memory Meadow, let's go. As soon as we spawn into Gusty Gateway, we have a bit of a problem. We're trapped on all sides. We can't fall off the back, and there are ledges too high to walk up. So of course the solution is a frame-perfect trick. At least I think it's frame-perfect, because I got it extremely rarely. As you spawn into the level, you have an extremely small window to activate your hover. I almost thought another jump was needed here, but no, just a whole lot of luck. After that, it's smooth sailing to the next checkpoint. Well, smooth sailing in the context of this run. We automatically jump into the air from this wire at the end, letting us hover up to the ledge. And this next one is small enough for the enemies to push us onto it. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't try that in other parts of the game where we couldn't get up the ledge. And I did, but I didn't find a single other case where it worked. Either there's something buggy about this particular spot, or the other ledges were just too tall. After sliding down to the next checkpoint, we can climb up these stairs no problem. Then we activate this spinning platform, and either stepping off with perfect timing or falling and hovering will get us to the other side. And then, we're right next to a checkpoint. All that stands in our way is this insurmountable ledge. 
It would be fine if we went around the other way, but I tried, and the invisible wall prevents us from hovering up, so we can't. This is a good one. Man, I was so proud of myself when I found this solution. These dive bombing enemies are found here, so if we position them just right, oh yeah, we can push through the barrier, hover, and just barely clip the checkpoint box. We'll then die and respawn on top of the ledge. My genius knows no bounds. Getting to the next checkpoint isn't hard, but there's a ledge right after it. We can just fall down and get killed by an enemy, respawn in the air, and hover on top of it. Easy. Next, there's another staircase, and there's no way around this one, we have to jump. The enemies can't push us onto it, and it's too far from the ledge to double hover to it. One more jump to our total. The last part is complicated and required a bit of routing. The best way to do it I could find is to use one jump getting onto this rock, and then double hover around the outside decorations to make it to the end. I couldn't find any way up there without at least jumping once though, so I assume that's the minimum. That does it for Gusty Gateway though. Only two jumps, not bad, and not much of the game left. Oh, oh, you want me to stop doing that? Is the joke getting old? Well, we're finally at the place alluded to, so I guess I could stop now, right? Wrong. If I am to truly be an A-list YouTuber, I need to absolutely beat this joke into the ground. Have another. And another. And another. Are you laughing yet? Hmm, what else do I need to be a proper celebrity? <clears throat> Only a small percentage of those who watch these videos are actually subscribed to my channel. If you were to like and subscribe- Yeah, enough of that, let's finish this challenge run. Electro Cloud is by far the worst level in the entire game. Stop it! It actually starts off pretty well. We can double hover to the set of stairs, and when the clouds fall, the barrier that prevents us from falling off gets glitchy, and we can pass through. The difficult part is when we need to ride this platform with the electric obstacles. Theoretically, it's possible to do this part with zero jumps, but it might be harder to do than the GPU jungle boss fight. You can walk off the back of the platform, but it's extremely hard to get a double hover. Not only that, but by the time you try to fly back, you might not be able to make it because the platform moves so fast. I wasn't able to prove anything possible here. If you want to help me out in my crusade against jumps, doing this successfully would probably be a good place to start but as it stands now, it adds two jumps to our total. We can't get up this next ledge without a jump, but we can get to this higher ledge and use it to get a double hover. Then we can use this rotating platform to get up this high ledge and double hover to the next checkpoint. We can then kill ourselves and respawn in the air so we can hover to this rotating platform, then double hover at the right time to get to the next stable position. You might think we could just run across these electrified platforms at the right time, but unfortunately, this game is dumb and stupid. It won't let us off the corner, so I guess that means another jump to cross it. I tried to double hover from the second rotating platform to the other side, but it's insanely difficult to get on and the distance I need to travel might not even be possible, but this jump holds the potential to be unnecessary. The finale of Electro Cloud brings yet more challenges, excitement, and heartbreak. Managing to hover in the extremely small time window the Smashing TV gives us took me a lot of tries, but it's possible. Alternatively, you might be able to glitch through the wall with an enemy. Now we're at the final checkpoint. We can make it to this platform with a double hover, but this is where things get super tricky. Routing this final section is very hard. There are a bunch of clouds, which theoretically can be passed without a jump due to their falling, but that's nearly impossible to do consistently. The best way I found was to double hover to the second platform and use two jumps to get on top of this TV. It might be possible with one jump, I couldn't manage it, but for those looking to help, I'd suggest here as well. From there, we can double hover to the end of the level. Alright, that last level gave us some trouble, but we're finally at the final boss, only having used 18 jumps. Not quite as few as I was hoping for, but it's sure better than the hundreds most people used in their original playthrough. Time for the final boss fight, and as you'd expect from the final boss, it's one of the most challenging parts of the run, but not in the way you'd probably expect. As soon as we spawn in, we have to find some way to hit the power button on the PS1, but we can walk up the sloped controller handle and hover to the console. When the first set of memory card stairs appear, we can get to the first step from on top of the console and hover our way up. We need to get on this disc to make the next part of the path appear, and we can get off it, although it's tricky because the disc is spinning and the ground isn't far below. Unfortunately, there's no way off this memory card path, and it requires a jump that I use to get onto this second disc. But oh, it doesn't end there. 
Then we have a staircase that doesn't allow for hovering up because the steps are spaced too far apart. So that's another three jumps that are required of us to get to the disc at the top, and one final jump from there to get onto the final set of memory card stairs. From there we can hover up though and reach the last checkpoint before the end of the game. Here we're rewarded with two extra hearts to use up during the final boss fight. After about half an hour fighting the boss, I'd finally figured out exactly what I needed to do in order to beat him. When he bites and these shockwaves appear, we can't jump over them, but because of the initial stage ripple, we can fall off and hover back on around the shockwaves. Then when he tilts the platform and sends another shockwave, we slide off and air stall for long enough for the dragon to go into stun mode. If you didn't survive long enough, the phase will just restart. Then we can respawn, take advantage of the air, hover over to his eye and smack him. No jumps required. Well, it's not quite that simple. For some stupid reason, it won't let you hover after a respawn specifically when the T-Rex is in stun mode. That or it's frame perfect, but I was able to get it just fine during other times, so this is an oddly specific and extremely annoying little detail thrown in just to ruin our day. So it looks like the first phase of the boss fight will take two jumps, to hit the eye twice in stun mode. Also, we lose both our extra hearts here, and let me just say that I became way too familiar with this boss fight during all the time I spent. After we deal two hits to the orange dino, a small platforming section appears so we can go to the second arena. And of course, everything has to be spaced out, so we can't use double hovers to make it across. This and the whole challenge in general was really quite the blow to my sanity. Four jumps for this minuscule section. Why? It just wasn't fair. I guess if there's any good news, it's that the final boss phase requires absolutely no jumps whatsoever. No shockwave attacks here, we just need to be smart about how we dodge things. The ejected discs threw me for a loop at first, but I figured it out. So, is that it? Five jumps needed for the platforming to reach the boss and six to actually beat it? Well, that would bring our total to 29 jumps. Not bad, but not as low as I was hoping. But while I was editing this video, I had a strikingly brilliant idea. What really bugged me about the final boss fight was the four jumps needed in the middle. They seemed so worthless. And then I found a way to eliminate them. If we had our two spare lives left during the platforming section, we could get through it without a single jump by exploiting the respawn mechanics. I was prepared to use an extra two jumps in the initial phase of the boss fight to conserve those lives, which would overall save us two jumps and bring the total down to 27. But what I found was even better than that. We can still get around the initial shockwave without a jump. We just need to jump when the platform is tilted. And when it untilts itself before the dinosaur is stunned, we get popped into the air for a brief moment. We can hover and then attack the eye without using a single extra jump, which means we can beat the first phase with two jumps and zero lives lost, and then skip the whole platforming section. I guess that brings our final total to a whopping 25 jumps. And most of those are due to the mechanic that prevents us from falling off platforms. If we didn't have that, we would only need 7 jumps to beat the game. Well, it looks like our journey has come to an end. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed. Between the challenge itself, writing, and editing, I spent over 30 hours on this video and your support would really make it worthwhile. If this video gains a lot of traction, maybe I'll do another challenge. Let me know in the comments. It's nearly time for us to part ways. By the way, I have it on good authority that the PlayStation 6 is coming out on November 14th, 2027. Who is that authority, you ask? Not who? What? The power of math. Honestly, if I get that right, that'll be extremely funny. In other news, Microsoft still hasn't learned to count.